Hello and welcome to the Red Laugh Riot podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Ben. <laughs> right. After that, we always have the worst <laughs> intros. It's always the worst <laughs> intros. Well, yeah, welcome anyway. along to the Red Laugh Riot podcast. As Matt said, he's Matt. I'm Ben. Um, and with that, Matt, do you want to introduce the next se- segment of the show? Yeah, sure. First segment. Um, so the first segment is a little segment we like to call uh, Reading the Headlines. What we do is uh, we go to Reddit, front page of Reddit. Uh, ben finds some cheeky headlines. Uh, he reads them. We have a little chat about it. Um, sometimes we have a little dive into the old Reddit uh, comment threads. Um, and, and, you know, if we, if we find a little bit of gold in there, we usually also read the comment as well. That's it. Cool, cool. Nice. I think that was a pretty good explanation description. of what it was, actually. It's a, it's a good explanation. It was quite long, but it was, it was good. Anyway, yeah. moving on. Oh. The first headline is from politics. Senate GOP agrees to one-week delay on Kavanaugh confirmation to allow for FBI probe. I have no idea what any of that means. You're, you're a man of politics, Matt. What do you... Do you know what that's um, talking about? Okay, so the the GOP is the Republican Party in the states, right? So I assume that basically the GOP have been doing some shady stuff. I'd imagine. Um, it well, sounds like this is this this guy Kevin or what? It sounds like he's been doing some shady stuff. Um. Okay. So th- basically, what's happening, right? Is um, Trump, right, gets to nominate, um, a judge to the Supreme Court, right? Mm-hmm. And how the Supreme Court works in America is, um, you're a, you're a judge on the Supreme Court for life, right? That's how it oh, works. Okay. Um, but what we've got at the moment is... So this guy, um, Kavanaugh, whatever his name is, um, he's been accused of, um, sexual assault, but I think the sexual Mm. assault case is, like, 25 years old, or, like, 35 years old, it's, like, it's a pretty old case, um, so now there's, like, at the moment there's this, they're, they're having hearings and stuff to basically decide whether this guy should be allowed to serve on the Supreme Court. So he's currently a judge, you say? Yeah, so he's currently a judge. Um, okay. I don't know what, on what level, but he's was probably he a judge on like... before, before these cases or after he became a judge? I think it was before. I think it was. I think it's like back in his college days. Uh, okay. So like, you've got that, but like, you've got the. I mean, I think also one of the major issues with that is that this guy is um, incredibly right-wing. Um, and so for the left-wing, the left-wing are worried about uh, cases being overturned um, and basically all this work that the left have done, um, you know, in the eight years that Obama was president will be undone. Um, so that's the issue. I mean, one of the major things is that uh, Kavanaugh is a supporter of um, removing the Roe versus Wade case, which basically um, allowed ab- abortions to be legal in the United States, because at the moment they're fighting to the basically a lot of the Republicans are fighting to have abortions uh, illegal, but they can only do it through the Supreme Court. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Most of that kind of went straight through my head, and because. <laughs> Politics in general, especially U.S. politics, are just that's the th- like, that, generally. That, I don't have yeah. that much interest. To say. Yeah, I mean, like it's not like it's gonna affect me too much, too much. Right. Um, and I have no idea who these people are, <laughs> so I don't really need to <laughs> get involved exactly. 
Because, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I mean, for me personally, it's, um, I find politics fascinating. I mean, in the first episode, um, when we were doing the Lipton questionnaire, we, uh, one of the questions was, what would you be doing <laughs> if you couldn't do the, like, profession, um, that you're currently doing? Um, and my answer was <coughs> political science, um, you know, be, being a political scientist, because to me, politics is fascinating, especially American politics, which is much more polarized um, than New Zealand politics. Um, so I find that interesting. I could literally do an entire podcast about politics easily, <laughs> but I, could I do definitely it. could not. I mean, so... <laughs> the only problem is I feel like 90 percent of people listening to it would just fall asleep or just like click away. Because <laughs> who wants to listen to? You know, who wants to listen to a 19-year-old talk about politics? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's the next headline, Ben? The next headline is from World News, but it's another politics-related one. U.S. House Committee votes to release Trump-Russia transcripts. Heard anything about this? Uh, I, think it's just, I think it's just, again, it's just the whole Trump thing, because I know that Russia interfered with... Um, with the 2016 election, um, so right. it's probably it's probably just investigations of that that have been ongoing since 2016. So it's like a two year investigation now. Um, Jeez. Yeah, or, or like multiple investigations and probes and committees and so on. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to say about it that hasn't been said, but. Um, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Trump at all. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Fair like enough. I said, I could talk about politics like all day, but... Um, well, luckily the next headline is not politics related. Yeah. Um, <laughs> from For movies. For Ben's sake. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds starring in a movie about a man who realises he's a background character in a video game. Stranger Things producer Sean Levy to direct. This sounds so funny. Apparently the title of the film is Free Guy. Right. Oh, I see. So, um, someone's saying, I think this might be a synopsis, but Free Guy is in the vein of the Truman Show. So, oh, um, okay. basically, instead of a guy believing he's in the real world, well, I know he does... Like, he, he believes he's in the real world, and then he must realise that he's actually in a vi- inside a video game. Right. That would brutally crush your soul. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I'm so excited by the concept of this movie. It sounds incredible. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool idea, um, and a really interesting yeah. idea as well. Um... Would they make it, like, a popular video game that everyone knows? Because... If it's not, then, like, everyone's like, well, I never knew the actual main character, so why does this guy now mean anything? You know, like, it's, I don't know, I feel like it'd be more effective if he was, like, a video game that everyone knows. Right. Um, but then that main character of that video game is, like, hardly involved with the movie at all. Like, <laughs> that would be quite yeah. funny. Or, I, yeah. or, you know how good it would be if they didn't announce that that's what the movie was about? And they, it was just a movie about Ryan Reynolds living his life, suspecting that he's, I don't know, like in the Matrix or something like that, you know? And they kind of make it that kind of vibe. Yeah. And then it's revealed he's actually in, like, the Spider-Man PS4 game or something, you know? A real popular game. And it was like, what the hell? <laughs> and then, like, just like a massive kind of twist on that. That would be quite funny. But also, yeah. the whole buzz about releasing what the movie is about will get it more attention, probably. Than if it was just like some kind of thriller kind of thing with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I mean, because that's been it's being described as an action comedy, right? Is what I've yeah. seen, um, like just now. Um, I mean, you know, th- like the whole the whole idea of having it attached to a popular video game would be an interesting one. I just think though that it's more likely to be a fictional video game because of like. I mean, you'd have to get, like, the rights, you know? You'd have to get, yeah. like, the rights to it and go through all that stuff. 
Um, Obviously, yeah. I mean, it's already, you know, it's 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 already got buzz because, you know, people are talking about it. I mean, we're talking about it right now. So, mm -hmm. so that's, you know, that's always the ideal thing that you want when it comes to, when it comes to a film. Um, yeah, I, cause I presume that, excuse me, I presume that they're, um, you know, still in pre-production stages. Yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah, obviously. They've only just cast him, I guess. And so is 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 Sean Le Levy is he producing it or is he directing it or Oh he's directing he's it. He's directing it. He produces Stranger Things, he's directing this movie. That sounds cool. This could be like one of those few video game movies that are successful. Like yeah. I mean, I guess I was thinking of Jumanji, that doesn't really count as a video game movie because it's not based on a video game, it's based on a board game and they made it. A video game. Yeah. So that's kind of different. I guess it's more like Rick It Ralph than anything. Rick It Ralph's less Truman Show, I guess. That's what other people have been saying on these comments as well. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just a combination. Fascinating, and I'm excited to see it. Yeah. No, it sounds, sounds, sounds very, very cool. It's got hype already, which is brilliant. Um, I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably see it. I'll probably have a gander. Um, I mean, hard to say when I don't know when the... It depends what it looks like when the trailers and stuff come out. Because some yeah. like, movies, like, in their concept, like, they sound, like, brilliant. And you see a trailer. And, like, for example, Ready Player One. Um, I've heard that it's a great book. I've never read the book. Yeah. But, and as soon as the first trailer came out, because I was quite excited before, before that point, as soon as the first trailer came out, I just thought, this looks, like, really dumb. It just didn't look interesting at all. So, right. yeah. It's all on the execution, I guess, you know, like, yeah. I guess that's different, because that was a, an adaption from a book as opposed to, like, an original idea, so it's even kind of a different case, but... Yeah, as opposed to someone getting, like, the... Because hasn't there been a fair few, like, Assassin's Creed... Assassin's Creed um, films, right? There's, there's been one movie. There's been one... What, are you talking about games or movies? Yeah, yeah, well, there's been there's been... Has there, has there only been one film made? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, because you've had Assassin's Creed. Like, that's not based on a, you know, on a book and then, you know, to a to a film. It's just based on a video game. Um, yeah. The thing is, they didn't base it. They didn't really base it on the video game. They took the concept of the video game and then made that the concept of the movie. Right. As opposed to taking the actual story of the video game, which is like 90% in the past, back in time, but yeah. instead they kind of made the movie too much about the concept of a person being in this machine, which takes them back in time, so that most of the movie was actually in present day. It didn't really do much of what you actually do in Assassin's Creed, which is assassinate people in the past, you know, and it's, it got, I think it got too bloated and full up with this, this, kind of present day kind of stuff and this whole virtual reality kind of concept that it that's what made it fail just yeah they didn't actually they didn't do what made the Assassin's Creed game fun right they didn't do that with the movie at all right yeah I mean isn't isn't there a long history of video games being like video video game um films being Movies bad never being good yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's like a the majority of them have been um, until, rubbish. Yeah, until until Jumanji, I guess, is what people were saying. But I really wouldn't even call that a video game movie. Right. Like stuff like yeah. Jumanji or Rick It Ralph, they're kind of not because they're not based on a video game. They just involve video games as a way of t yeah. telling the story, but it's still an original story. You know. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think perhaps it's something to do with. You know, if you compare, you know, source mat like different source materials being turned into films, right? Well, like most common, is probably is probably like book to film would be the most common. Oh uh, yeah. Like way to adapt. Book to something. film, comic, comic book, graphic novels. Uh, yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's there's writing it. Yeah. Whereas there's not as much writing. And I think it's also it's probably something to do with. Because with a, like, it's, 
the adaptability of a book versus a video game would also be about the fact that with in regards to a video game you have like in regards to a video game you sort of because because it's more inter like video games are the most interactive media thing entity you know yeah yeah while yeah so it's it's sort of, it's sort of a different beast compared to everything else media or like exactly. it's like a book wise. and a movie a book and a movie in the same and they, they both tell a story that goes start middle end but the video game is not like that video game is like a big mesh it's not like a linear story necessarily but there might be a storyline in the in the game but most games don't have good compelling storylines they're just like oh this is the story mission you know you just do that but it's not about yeah. it's not the story that makes the game fun usually it's usually the gameplay right and so yeah yeah exactly when you look at a video game it's like this is popular let's make a movie out of it you have to create the story yourself basically because the story either is non-existent or isn't compelling enough as a story on its own that you need to make it up and do all this thing and they obviously just don't get good writers on boards to come up with good stories and good characters for it it's i think because i think they just assume that because it's a popular video game it'll be a popular movie but that's obviously not how it works um and yeah yeah so i don't think they pay, yeah, pay well, enough attention to it yeah for sure there's not enough um there's not enough thought process behind how do we turn this video game into a compelling a compelling story um yeah to you know and to actually craft that that storyline and that plot line um and that like sequence of events and scenes that make up a film um is something that's sort yeah. of missed when it comes to video game films i right. i would i i would i would say that yeah okay um well cool is it time I think to move on yeah yeah um i think that's it in regards to reading um reading the headlines um so uh ben do you want to introduce the next segment yeah so the next segment um today well we well every week we do a top five list um which is inspired by a movie that i can't remember the name of <laughs> yeah so it's inspired it's inspired by the film high fidelity um fantastic one. film by the way in which they um f- throughout the film they so he's uh the main character and his mates uh keep making top five lists lists um so that's sort of where the inspiration comes from cool 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 i mean people make top five lists all the time so yeah anyway <laughs> um <laughs> this week we're doing our top five favorite youtube channels or youtube youtubers um i thought this one was fitting since we're kind of trying to get into that zone to um talk about people that people online that inspire us or that we really love to watch so we'll start off with um uh your do you want to start with your number five matt um yeah sure um oh oh this is really hard um <laughs> here's the thing did right? you not make a list yeah I haven't, I haven't made a list before i forgot um, oh no ben, how did that happen ben, maybe maybe do you want to go first <laughs> i can i can buy some time <laughs> so i can make a list <laughs> okay okay all right well i'll start then um, my number five favorite YouTuber is quite a famous one. He's been on YouTube for years and years. He's been quite famous. At one point in time, he was the, like, most subscribed YouTuber on the platform. Many years ago, this was. Um, and that's Ryan Heger, a.k.a. Niger Heger. Oh, um, and yeah. I, basically, yeah. his channel has just been so consistent, like, throughout its its life like it's never like changed drastically to do different types of content like always make consistent videos even if the videos aren't always like 
hilariously funny. They're always consistent in their style and their flow and he still is pumping out this content and putting out all this dedication and, and hard work into this and it's just like really impressive. And I think he's one of the only YouTubers I know of that has stuck around all this time and has always done the same thing. Like, I don't know, like, he's never been someone who goes down a rabbit hole of following trends and all that kind of stuff. He, he almost always does the opposite. Like, he paradises trends and all that kind of thing. That's what you expect from him, I guess. So, yeah, I just put him down. He's my number five just because he's just, like, not because I, like, a lot of the videos sometimes are just like, yeah, that was okay. But, like, the consistency in the quality of the videos, I think, is just, like, what's really impressive to me and for how long he's been doing it. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, um, Ryan Hager was a guy who I, um, I, I remember watching him, like, back in the day, you know, back in, like, oh, like... The iPod human! Yeah, like, late primary, yeah. late primary, early, intermediate, I yeah. think, was sort of his peak. Um, like, his How to Be Ninja... You know yeah. that How to Be series? Like, How to Be Ninja, How to Be Gangster, I think another one was. Um, I haven't watched them yeah. much lately, but I like I know he's still around. And that's that's I think that's a testament to, yeah. to his ability because um, I think it's a testament to his to his abilities because you know, when it when it comes to internet, like famous and stuff, you have because yeah when, when it comes to internet famous you know a lot of it is sort of your your 15 minutes of fame but to sort of be consistent and to you know still have a relatively large subscriber base i don't know off the top of my head his subscriber base but it's still very much very large you know to to maintain that is is amazing um especially in you know the internet age yeah absolutely yeah, for those of you who don't know, so he's the one behind. Oh wait, you just talked to me. You just said all those videos. Ignore that. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say the video. He's made a lot of famous videos. Most of the famous videos he made was back in the day. Um, but I've been following him like like I, I I've really only been doing the whole you like regularly watching YouTube videos since like twenty thirteen maybe. Um, that's when I started like gathering subs subscriptions and that sort of thing and regularly kind of having a watch. Like it used to be like once a week I'd go in and watch that week's YouTube videos, now it's every day, it's like a huge feed, because I'm subscribed to so many different channels. Um, right. Yeah, but yeah, since about 2013 anyway, because there was, I guess there was a shift in the kind of content he made from, like the early, like, like around 2009 or whenever he was doing that, How to Be Ninja, that kind of stuff, and he's kind of morphed into this new version of what he does, which he's been doing consistently since 2013, which is still kind of in that vein, but just on a, on a larger scale, I guess. So they have more room yeah. to be more creative and more wacky, but it's not like the guy against his wall, and is, you know, throwing a DVD at another guy, <laughs> like how it used to be. <laughs> so it's the same kind of personality in the videos. Still, they have twenty-one million subscribers. Twenty-one um, million—that's insane. Um, and PewDiePie, for example, who is the most subscribed, has sixty-six million. So, Whew. he's he's twenty-two million. Still a heck of a lot. Yeah, that's still that's still an amazing amount of of um yeah. of subscribers for sure. Um, yeah, and although to be fair, I don't think twenty two million people are watching his videos every week. For example, his last yeah yeah his, his most recent video has five point eight million views. Um, although yeah, and then I guess it depends on the popularity. Like certain videos might go more more viral than others. Um. All right. Um. Well. Yeah. So, um, luckily, I managed to conjure up a little top five list. Uh, my number five is a uh, YouTuber uh, by the name of Connor Franta. Uh, he's one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, you know, his, his style is very much, you know, just, um, you know, just to set down vlogs. Um... But they, they are, they are, you know, they are well made, especially, you know, when he sort of like, um, he, he sort of like changed up his style, um, as, as he's continued, um, 
yeah, I just, I just like, I really like watching, I really like watching his, his, um, his content, um, he's, he's, unfortunately, lately, he's sort of, um, you know, his, uh, regularity, in terms of his schedule, has sort of gone a bit haywire, because he's been doing other ventures, um, but, yeah, I don't know, it's just a really nice guy, who I very much love to, to watch, and sort of just, more for, like, the feel-good sort of side of things, um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's about it. Cool. Yeah. I've never heard of him, but I don't, yeah, I don't tend to follow people who do, like, just, like, vlogs and that kind of stuff, like, it, like, for example, what's another one, Casey Neistat's really popular, but I just, I don't, I don't get it. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's totally fair. <laughs> um, well, my fourth favourite YouTube channel is called Rocket Jump. Um, and I talked about Rocket Jump last week because they produced my favourite TV show of all time, Video Game <laughs> High School. Um, so on YouTube, they started off on YouTube eight or nine years ago, um, and they have currently 8.3 million subscribers. So not a huge, huge following, but I think they've definitely got their fans. So they've produced... Um, just a bunch of short, like they do a bunch of skits and shorts and all that kind of thing on YouTube. They haven't done as much recently because they've been doing some web series. Um, so the first one they did was Video Game High School. Then they did a show on Hulu called The Rocket Jump Show, or Rocket Jump The Show, which was a show where they made a short film and documented the whole process behind making that short film. When I think there were eight, eight or ten episodes or something. Oh, um, wow. And they're like really high production value short films. And it was really interesting, although I've only only the first episode's actually on YouTube, the other episodes are on Hulu, which we can't watch because we don't have Hulu here. Um, and then another, and then the next show they did was called Dimension 404, which I think came out last year, um, possibly the year before, um, which is another Hulu show, which again, can't watch, um, which sucks, but it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> everything we've seen, which was an anthology series where a sci-fi, kind of a sci-fi series where they just had a, kind of like Black Mirror or whatever, probably not as dark, but they just had a different episode every day, sorry, every week or wherever it was for six episodes or however long it was. And then the most recent web series they've done is in collaboration with um, Crunchyroll, it's called Anime Crimes Division. Um, the first season came out last year. I believe, and they've just started the second season. The, the fourth episode just came out today. Um, I haven't caught up on it, I've only seen the first two episodes, but yeah, that's so that's with a famous YouTuber called ProZD. So he makes just like, he's a voice artist um, who makes funny videos all the time, and is very involved in anime and all that kind of stuff, and he's the main character in this show. Um, and basically he's a cop, or an anime cop, <laughs> and they go around and um, investigating crimes related to anime it's just really interesting even if you don't really watch anime it's still a cool show yeah i mean um i personally haven't watched any um any of rocket jumps content i'm looking at their channel now um i mean eight million subscribers so clearly they're doing doing something right and the way you talk about them as well um, it's clear that, that, you know, they're doing, <laughs> you know, you know, that they're, it, it's clear that they're doing, that they're doing good things and they're doing, doing something right. Um, yeah, I mean, whether, yeah, whether I eventually get, get into it, um, or not will be another thing, but, um. There's just so much content. I mean, the thing with, you know, it's interesting with these channels that, you know, <clears throat> we're mentioning in our lists is that, you know, with the, yeah, in, in regards to these channels that, that we're mentioning, we haven't seen, you know, like everything that there is in regards yeah. to content yeah, because there's so much of it, um, which is both some both something that's so, so cool, but also um, incredibly depressing like yesterday i was actually thinking about it and i said to my mate um like 
there's so much stuff out there, whether it be music or films or YouTubers, that you will never see because there's just too much of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's just like our yeah, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, and he, he, he turned to me after that and he was like, fuck man, you just made me really depressed. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that, that, that nah. was the thing. If you're going right. to watch anything by Rocket Jump, Watch, watch video game high school because it's an incredible, incredible show. It's easily still the best thing they've ever done. Um, then again, I haven't seen Dimension of Forever or well, the rest of the Hulu show, uh, the other Rocket Jump show. But yeah, video game high school is amazing. They also they had a like a or they have a, a sub channel or a sister channel called Rocket Jump Film School, um, which it's for some reason it seems like they're not using anymore or they're not uploading to it. Because the last, the most recent Rocket Jump Film School video was actually uploaded to the normal Rocket Jump channel. So I don't know why, but they're not using it or they're not doing it. What they used to do is they used to make video essays and tutorials and that sort of thing on behind the filmmaking and, you know, tips oh. and tips for, for, for upcoming filmmakers and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And that was really interesting, but as I said, they don't really do that kind of stuff anymore. It, like... At the moment, yeah. their content is very irregular because I guess they're focused on these other shows at the moment. They're less focused right. on shorts, and so they don't do regular shorts. They'll just get once in, an hour, once in a while, you get a sponsored short. So one of the recent ones was they did a single one-shot uh, short, which was very well done. I mean, it was sponsored by Mile 22, the movie. And then they've had ones that are sponsored by Blizzard or... Um, Fortnite or whatever um, to make those kind of videos but yeah so recently they haven't done too much regular but they've got a huge backlog of really great videos that I recommend if you have some spare time go down that rabbit hole <laughs> and just find some videos <laughs> well you mentioning you mentioning um, that rocket jump film school perfectly segues um, well not perfectly but sort of segues <laughs> in to my number four pick, um, which is a channel called. Um, oh no, no, it doesn't. It would it would segue into my second pick. My bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you stuff uh, us up. Just, just <laughs> <laughs> it's just all going. To, it's all going to tatters. Um, no, um, I suppose it does. Um, it, yeah, so um, that brings um brings us to my number four pack, um, a channel called Cut, um, <coughs> which is a, um, it's a a channel based in, I believe they're based in Seattle, uh, Seattle, Washington. Yes, uh, they are, um, and the content they make is really interesting because they sort of make. Um, like, they have lots of different sort of series. One of them is Truth or Drink. So they get two people together, um, and they, um, have, like, a list of questions that they ask each other, and basically they have two options. One is to answer the question truthfully, or they can choose, uh, to take a shot of alcohol. Um, and I, I, I don't know why, but... I enjoy watching people drink occasionally. <laughs> um, not as good as drinking as um as drinking um drinking yourself, of course. Um, but yeah, that's one of them. Um, another series they do is beer pong, where they play beer pong. Um, but the little twist is under each cup or some of the cups is um a deer um that they can choose to do. Uh, so that's really cool. I see. Um, another series is uh, lineup, um, which is really, which is re I find really cool. Um, so they get a lineup of people, um, and uh, there's another person there who basically sort of took talks to each person and has to guess something about each person in the lineup, and so they've done everything to um, who has a criminal record to um, you know, to, to guess, um, people's individual sexual kinks, 
so it's 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 weird but it's 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 really cool and it's really interesting um and they do a bunch of other content as well um and it's i don't know it's just interesting because it's uh it's also it's sort of the the social side of side of things that they sort of focus on you know um you know the they sort the con their content is very much people driven um and yeah. Seems interesting. Yeah, and it's just really interesting. So it's definitely a channel that people, for sure, um, should check out. I don't usually watch those kind of videos. Like, video like I've seen I've seen some videos not not from that channel, but where they like, like get a group of people to talk about some social issue or they play some sort of game like or or a one on one blind date that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They're kind of interesting one off videos, but I like wouldn't want to like. Like when I subscribe to someone, I'm usually subscribing for that person and for the content they make, as yeah. opposed to a group of random strangers every week or whatever. You know, like that doesn't interest me as much. It doesn't hold my attention personally. Right. Yeah. Right. No, that's 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 fair enough. Yeah. I mean, Cut has six point one million subscribers, and have been around since two thousand and fourteen. Um, all right, uh, Ben, what's your number three pick, I think we're up to? Um, yeah, my number three is, uh, uh, a couple of guys called Chris and Jack, um, and they are hugely under, not underrated, but, um, under, undersubscribed, I guess, for the, the, the quality of their content is so high, yet they only have 85,000 followers on YouTube. Um, they only oh, started, wow. I think, two years ago. Um, but what they do is they create skits, shorts, um, that kind of film stuff. Um, it's usually it's usually all very dialogue driven, just between the two guys, and it's usually just like some kind of funny or weird concept. Um, and they're they're just, they're just really well made, really well written, well acted kind of scripts. There's a lot of improv involved and everything. So um, Chris used to be a member of the Blue Man group, and Jack um, is the voice of soccer from Avatar The Last Year Um, Oh, wow. And he's... So it's just these two guys who've been friends, I think, since college or probably high school or something like that. They've been friends for a long time. They decided to make this content, and they make some really good good stuff. One of my personal favourites is um, Groundhog Groundhog Daying, which is about a guy who's basically like doing what happens on Groundhog Day and then he, he meets another guy who is like, wait, are you Groundhog Day? And it's just like a really, it's a really funny wee skit. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of that kind of stuff where they just do kind of funny concepts that you would have not thought of. Yeah. So I highly yeah. encourage you to just check them out. Some good stuff. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> I have to mention the the abduction, um, or ab- abduction, which is the title of it, which came out last year made quite a splash on reddit and then that's how i discovered the channel um and then this year they posted a sequel to that and it's just like this ongoing thing it's just really funny um I don't right know what else i can say yeah. about it it's just a really great yeah kind of i mean stuff. unfortunately i don't really have anything really to add um due to the fact that um i haven't um i haven't personally um, I haven't personally seen, um, any of their content, um, but that does, um, that does mean I've reached my, uh, third pick, which is, uh, a channel by the name of Collider Video, um, so Collider make, um, uh, their content is very much movie-based, um, so they, review movies um they talk about movies they talk about tv shows as well occasionally um but the major reason why um why i watch them is for a series um called uh movie trivia uh movie trivia smowdown um which is where they get uh people together and they answer movie trivia questions 
um, but they treat it, it's really cool, because they treat it like, um, they treat it, like, super seriously, they treat it like a sport, so they have commentators, um, they have, like, graphics and everything, um, yeah, and it's just really cool to, to watch, um, to watch these guys play, um, because it's, like, a whole, um, you know, like, huge different groups of people, um, playing it, like, it's not just, you know, like, the same two guys, um, every week. Right, yeah. Um, I've, um, I've heard of them, but I've never actually watched their videos. It sounds kind of like Screen Junkies. Like, yeah. Kind of what it's like. Yeah. Yeah, um, so they, like, yeah, like, so they, um, I think Screen Junkies have actually participated in it. Yeah, I know some of the guys from Collider have been on Screen Junkies a lot. Yeah. I, can, I recognize some of their faces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, though, um, and so whenever I watch it, I always try and play along. And it's always funny because these guys get, like, 20 to 30 points, and I'm, like, lucky to get, like, 8 or 12. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Um, um. I mean, I don't just watch them for for mo- the, the for, for the trivia. That's sort of the major reason yeah. why I watch them. But I do also watch their other content occasionally. Because um, they do commentaries and podcasts and things as well, hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they do like a lot of movie movie review chats and movie news and stuff like that. Um, which is really yeah. cool to watch as well. Basically, a really good channel if you're into, um, <clears throat> a really good channel if you're into movies. Um, yeah, I mean, a sub- they have a subscriber count of 507, uh, 507,000, uh, people. Jeez. Um, which is surprisingly... That's kind of low. Low, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is surprisingly low. Um... I mean, Screen Junkies has six and a half million. Yeah. As a comparison. Wow, I thought they yeah. were more than that. And they've been going since 2007. Um, but they... Yeah, I mean, because the guy... They ended up, like... Because the uh, Smos know who are sort of the guys who run the movie trivia Smodown got, like bought out by Collider, I think was sort of the thing that happened. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of like offshoots of the, of the group, um, which is really cool. Um, yeah, just a really cool channel if you, if you really like, like movies. Oh, um, my number two pick then is a YouTube network called Talos um, and it's basically one guy who runs this whole network of about five or six different channels um, the main one being Talos of Tech so he's kind of known as the Apple sheep of YouTube he is a huge defender of Apple and their products most of the time um, and that's kind of his stick kind of his thing he's very honest um, that's why I admire about him a lot is how he <coughs> Like, well, he won't just defend something just for the sake of it. Like, he does, like, talk about some stuff and how, um, you know, bad decisions that Apple makes and that kind of thing. But for the most part, he gives very good reasoning for why you shouldn't hate a certain Apple product as much as everyone else seems to hate them, that sort of thing. So he's recently passed 100,000 subscribers. About this time last year, he is when I first started following him. And he was around 30,000, I think. Um, and so he's grown quite a lot in the last year. He's been able to move to doing it full time. Um, and he's got a huge office now and everything. And he's just recently hired an editor so that he can focus more on the videos. So his other channels include Talos of Talks, which is where he does vlogs and podcasts and just general kind of non-tech related discussions. He also has a gaming channel where him and his friends do gaming streams and that sort of thing. And then he also has a movie reviews channel. Um... But then the other, oh, and and a music channel, which is not directly run by him, but it's just kind of related. Uh, There's also a joke channel called Talos of Food, where they 
very irregularly um, upload videos of them e eating certain foods. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Um, but actually, the the main channel that he first started um, is just called Taylosive, and it's where they post shorts and skits and that kind of thing. And they also have another one called Taylosive Productions, which they haven't posted in, in I don't know how long, but where they post more serious short films and that kind of thing. Because um, right. they started off just doing shorts like every Saturday or something. Um, and they, yeah, that's kind of what he wants to do more. But he found that because he started a tech channel later on and he found that his th those videos started getting popular and so he started kind of focusing a lot of energy into that and now that's his main focus because that's what gets the most views and that's what, um, you know, that's how they earn their money and that's how they keep going and how they grow. But I think what he wants to be able to do is to do more short films and skits and that kind of thing as well. And so it's really cool to just see a kind of network building up. Like his, his, uh, his smaller channels have under 10,000 like the 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 next biggest one only has 8,000 and then um 5,000 or something for the other channels um right yeah as opposed to that 100,000 as opposed to 100,000 of the tech channel it's just like they all kind of pale in comparison um so it'd be cool to just see them grow and have them be able to make some more high production value uh skits and short films as well so I, I if you're interested in, in tech or apple if you're a big fan of apple like I am and Check him out, he's got some good opinions. Right. Um Yeah. Um so, yeah, definitely um definitely sounds interesting. Um so now uh, my turn. Um so my second pick is a channel by the name of uh Cinefix. Um and so they are a uh, channel that does, um, again, does movie content. Um, so they, um, and then they also do, like, lists. And they do really interesting lists. Um, usually top ten lists. Um, of, and they've, they've started getting really creative with how they, um, with how they do um, these lists. I mean, they've done everything from top 10 soundtracks of all time to, you know, top 10 remakes or top 10 musical moments of all time. Um, yeah, um, and I, 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 I really like watching their list because they mention films that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Um a lot of the time right. older films or more indie films um which is really interesting and so therefore that they've sort of pointed me um into the direction of you know of films that i wouldn't necessarily watch um that or rather that i wouldn't necessarily find on my own um which is really really cool yeah so they have uh, a little over three million uh subscribers um and they've been around since 2006. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really that's cool. really all I have to say about about them. Yeah, I've, um, but yeah, I've just seen a, really a few cool of channel. their videos. They're the, it's the kind of video that pops up on my like on my feed occasionally. I'm like, oh, that could be interesting. But um, what turns me off is like the guy, the narrator's voice. Just it, it's just one of those voices that just sounds cringy. You know, like Watch Mojo. It sounds like Watch Mojo, and it just frustrates me. And it's hard for me to listen to, even though the content's actually quite interesting, and it's not. Yeah. It's not terrible and horrible like Watch Mojo is. Um, it's actually interesting stuff, but he's like, it's just that kind of voice, which is just, it makes me think, cringe. That <laughs> like that's I don't know. It that's makes really me think like cringy top ten. That's really <laughs> interesting that you say that because I love the guy's voice. <laughs> Right, interesting. Okay. Yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't find his <laughs> voice cringy. I do find Watch Mojo cringy at times. Um, no, the worst <laughs> is um, the worst is oh, what are they called? Um, uh, channels like I think they're called like Torco or something. And there's another one. Um, oh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Um, oh, it's like really trashy, and it's like, 
Uh, but it's usually like a bunch of girls, like a bunch of like women, um, right. like blonde chicks and yeah. stuff, and they look fake as like Valley Girl, you know? Oh, what are they called? Um, oh, it's gonna annoy me for ages. Um, yeah, but th- <laughs> those those voices are way worse, man. If you think Watch Mojo are bad, like just try and put yourself <laughs> through a Talko video or something. It's oh. not. It's not just the voice itself. It's the way. It's the way it's written. The way they narrate it. It's just very yeah. like. Here's a top ten list of things that you've never seen before. Um, you know, like it's just that the way they talk and the way he says it just it feel, it feels unnatural, and it feels right. produced like consumeristic like. Um, clickbait kind of. It feels like a clickbaity kind of cringy voice. Um, right. You know, as opposed to other channels like nerd writer or lessons from the screenplay for example you know they give those kind of similar types of videos but they talk natural it feels natural the way they talk it feels less kind of scripted and structured and poetic like that like i'm not even poetic but like the yeah. rhythm it, it doesn't have like a a commercial rhythm to it which is what it feels right. like that's what i don't like about it okay yeah. here's a here's a question for you then what <laughs> Where where on the line are we with our top five? Are we? Are we on we're the, on the like, natural line. We're... Or like, we're on probably like so on the natural side that it's, that it's yeah, bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, I, I love it. Like, that's why I enjoy listening back to the podcast because I, it's like, it doesn't feel like we haven't, like, we know what topics we're talking about, but it still comes out of our na- mouths naturally. We're still kind of yeah. making up all these words. You know, we haven't written out a, a script and structured it to sound, you know, perfectly in rhythm or whatever. Um, yeah, all podcasts should be like that. If there's a podcast that sounds like Cinefix, that would be like the most horrible thing to listen to. <laughs> like, you can, you, I, I can go with it for a 10 minute top 10 video, but like, uh, if there's a whole podcast that was literally written out in a script, like, and they just read it. Like, how boring would that be? Like, yeah. It's not even a podcast. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that'd be so horrific. All right. Um, so I think it's time for your honourable mentions, Ben? Yep. Right? Yep, I've got a few. Um, yeah. Um, I'll briefly, briefly describe some of them, because you wouldn't have heard of them. Uh, one of them's Co- Cold Fusion. Um, he's a guy, he's a British guy, who talks about advancements in technology most of the time or, okay. or certain companies like he'll give the entire history of sony or apple or amazon oh, um, wow. or he'll talk about future technologies coming up such as vr and ar and hyperloop um driving you know self-driving cars all this kind of stuff and that that's what really gets me interested in the advancements in technology side of things he brings up a lot of kind of futuristic stuff um um like like blockchain and stuff, which is something you might have never heard of. It's really something that I can't even get my own head around. Um, but stuff, yeah. future technologies is it's just really fascinating because I want to know what the world's going to be like in the future. I want to I want to be ahead of it and I want to be ahead of that game. And that's something I think we should definitely talk about on the podcast that um, we may or may not talk about in a, in a future episode. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> that's mostly what he talks about. Um, nice. My next honourable mention is a guy named Mark Rober. He's like a really just genuine guy who posts. He's like a engineer slash science sciencey kind of guy who builds things and stuff. He just put out a video yesterday or the day before on there was this like scam online of this guy who had his cell phone flying in the air with these tiny little drone propellers, and he just pointed out how fake it was. And how it was actually a scam because he was just getting this like because this guy was earning money off that video saying that it was a real thing and getting people to go to the amazon link to like buy the parts for it and then he not only debunked it he then made a version of it which actually worked and so he does he does he did like a giant nerf gun he's done like some really crazy awesome stuff um and yeah (laughs) um next honorable mention brian tong he used to work for CNET, who, um, and he had a show called The Apple Bite, where he talked about Apple and all that kind of stuff. And now he started his own channel. I don't actually know what happened with CNET, if he got kicked out or what happened there, but I just really admire that he's doing his own thing now. It's really good content. Screen Junkies, we've talked about. They're kind of like collider videos, I guess. They talk about movies. They do movie fights. 
podcasts, uh, news and all that kind of stuff. Jeremy Johns, I actually haven't watched him in a long time because oh, I haven't felt yeah. the need to. Um, but he does movie reviews and he's probably my favorite movie reviewer because he just, he gets to the point. He's kind of straight to the point. He doesn't get too much involved in the details and the nitty gritty, kind of like Chris Stuckman does. He gets quite, quite into it, involved about the quality and the aspects of the film from a filmmaking perspective. Right. But Jeremy comes from a more consumer perspective, just like, I just want to have fun. Did I have fun with this movie? Did I enjoy it? Did I not? You know? And all I need to know is that I don't, before, before I see a movie, I prefer to know less about it. So if I'm unsure, I'll watch his video and see if it was enjoyable or not. And that's all I really need to know. Uh, Mr. Sunday Movies, I have mentioned before on the podcast. He does similar kind of videos. He does reviews. He does trailer breakdowns, all that kind of stuff. He also has a podcast called The Weekly Planet, which is really great. Um, the next one is a guy named War Owl, who is a CSGO YouTuber. Does a whole bunch of videos, mostly on, on, on Counter-Strike. Um which even though I don't play Counter-Strike as much as I used to, uh, even if I don't play it, I'll still watch all his videos because they're really entertaining and informative. And then the last mention of mine, rest in peace, great and array. Um, <laughs> I had to mention him, even though he doesn't make content anymore. For the time that he was active on YouTube, he made some of the funniest videos on the internet. Um, and yeah, so I thought that was worth mentioning. Yeah, um... I used to, I used to watch Grade A um under A as well. Back in yeah. the day, um, yeah, he was cool. Back in the he was day, cool well, he was only active like two years ago. Yeah, but it's been it's been about two years or so, something like that. It's been a long time since he posted actual content, proper content. Yeah, the last video right. I posted was probably a year ago. Right. I yeah. Could be wrong, but it was not. It was a long time. <laughs> right. um, did um, you have honorable mentions? Yeah, I do. I have a couple. Um, so I have uh, Connor Manning, who's um, another vlogger. Um, I used to watch him off, so I sort of stopped watching him since. Um, but I've been meaning to get back into him. Um, he sort of focuses more on like mental health um, and stuff like that. Um, so he was really good to sort of listen to. Um to like sort of you know to sort of feel better especially if you're um in like you know in a in a in that in that headspace um another channel is soul pancake um who are really interesting um they're sort of like you know a, a studio company um who make some really interesting content uh just kidding party um who make um, they basically film themselves playing, like, party games, um, especially love it when they play Mafia, I'm obsessed with that, with that game, um, <laughs> I love playing it, I love watching it, it's really, really interesting, um, another channel, alright, disclaimer with this channel, alright, it's a guilty pleasure, alright, <laughs> It's BuzzFeed Unsolved. Oh, BuzzFeed. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. That's why Buzzfeed. I said it was a guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. tell it. me about it. Um, no, no, no. It's just, um, they just do, um, it's just two of them. Um, and they've sort of, they've separated to their own channel, which is good, which means I don't really have okay. to go on to the actual fucking BuzzFeed channel anymore um <laughs> which is good um but they um they basically look at so they have um two separate series one of them is they look at um they look at supernatural cases and so they usually go to um like haunted like supposedly haunted places um and they do like paranormal paranormal investigations but the um the like banter between um between the two guys is really really funny and really entertaining um yeah and then the other one they do is uh true crime so they look at true crime like unsolved crime cases um and then they sort of like talk through theories um and stuff like that which is really which is really interesting as well um so i like I like watching it, um, but definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. 
yeah. Um, I think that's it. Oh no, wait. Um, uh, two others. Um, so another one is uh the Try Guys. Um, and so they go out and they um basically do individual things. They've done they've done everything like they've done a lot of different stuff. Um, which is really cool. And those are my honourable cool. mentions. Cool, cool. All right. My number one favorite YouTuber of all time um, is a guy named Limino, spelt L-A, sorry, L-E-M-M-I-N-O. Um, he used to be called Top Tier Memes before he's changed his name. Um, that's because he started off making videos about memes. Um, <laughs> Um, such as Rage Comics and that sort of thing. And then he started developing these top 10 facts videos, which became popular. Um, and then even, and now more recently he's doing, he's still doing top 10 facts and he's also doing just single topic videos. Um, one of them is literally my favorite video on the internet. It's called The Eight Spiders. Um, anyone listening to this, I encourage you to pause podcast or go watch it afterwards um it's uh it's hilarious it's hilarious and informative and yeah so basically his style the way he makes his videos is just so beautiful and amazing he's he's hilarious he's got a lot of character but he also makes he also picks out these really interesting things that you might have never heard probably have never heard about before um it's kind of like these obscure things like he did one on top 10 facts about music and you just, like, he talks about these weirdest things that you never would have thought of or heard about. And, he, yeah, he's quite humorous as well. Um, so I'd highly encourage him. Go to you to watch his videos. Um, yeah. That's that's all I have to say. Alright. Um, so with that, uh, we come to my number one pick. Um... I'm gonna imagine that uh, Ben and um, and Tash will both be not uh, surprised at all about my pick. No. Uh, my um, number one I pick what it is. is Rooster Teeth. Yep. Rooster Teeth are amazing. Um, so, for those who don't know, uh, Rooster Teeth are a production company based in Austin, Texas, uh, over in the States. Um, and so they make really, really interesting content. Um, they, oh, what do they make? Uh, and they, they have a bunch of other, like, divisions and stuff, uh, one of which is Achievement Hunter, um, who I watch all the time, um, who are a gaming channel and they do uh, a bunch of Let's Plays, um, and they're hilarious. They are, they are so funny. Um, uh, what else does Rooster Teeth make? Um, they make a lot of podcasts. Um, one of which is Always Open, which is probably one of my favourite podcasts. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what else? They also make, um, so they make a bunch of, like, uh, different, like, sketches and, and miniseries and, uh, shows. Um, a lot of the shows, um, unfortunately, I haven't seen yet, uh, just because of being, um, because of, um, so they have a, um, like a subscriber pay system to get, um, to get exclusive content, um, and so there's some shows, there's some shows there that, um, that I have yet to see, um, but I, um, but I really, really want to, um, just an amazing, an amazing um, uh, channel of content that I really, really love, and by far, um, my my favorite uh, channel on on YouTube. Cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really watch their content, so I don't know what to say. <laughs> but yeah. no, that's um, that's totally that's uh totally fair. Um. Right. Um, so I think that means, uh, we've reached our next topic. Um, so today we're going to talk about, um, social credit, um, which, 
Um, the idea I sort of first saw on, um, on an episode of Black Mirror, where, uh, in the episode Nosedive, where they sort of live in this future where you rate everyone sort of online, and you rate every interaction you have with someone, um, with a five-star five rating, and then your sort of overall rating um, on this um, social platform is then, you know, th is then determines um, everything about you in terms of uh, what type of houses you can buy um, and everything like that. Um, and it's a really good episode of Black Mirror, and Black Mirror is a fantastic show. You should definitely watch it if you haven't. Um, but um, where this come, where this becomes particularly interesting, is that uh, China are now sort of implementing their own program um, of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is which is really really interesting. Um, ben, what's your what's your thoughts uh, on this? I... So yeah, I, I did do some reading into it because, well, finally, I, I, I first watched that episode of Black Mirror last year, I think, um, with my brother and sister-in-law. My brother and sister-in-law, not my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and she said when we finished it, she's like, wow, like, like there's no way like the world would ever be like that. And I was just like, no, I can totally see this happening, like in the near future, in the, near, in the next hundred years, like the world could be like that for sure um like like even 50 years like the rate technology is advancing is just so fast that it's not only changing what we do with technology but also how we interact with each other as people and and um socially the side of that as well and the thing about the black mirror episode is slightly different from how social credit actually works whereas in black mirror it's per people personally uh, rating each other which is not quite how it works um, on the social credit side. The social credit side is it's a system that rates you, not people rating each other, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah. And so it started out, yeah, so I did a lot of reading into it, and it started out uh, a, few, a few years ago, two or three years ago maybe, or maybe even earlier. Um, it started out with a company who made this app, which everyone, everyone in China uses this app called, I think it's called WePay, something like that, to pay for things. And so right. they decided um, to start the system where depending on your purchasing behavior, your financial behavior, you could kind of get points and unlock higher tiers of certain things that you could do or buy. Um, for example, there was like a bike swap system where you could just leave a bike around and then someone could come along and hire that bike. But if you were under a certain amount of points, you couldn't hire that bike or something. This stuff like that, or certain items that you couldn't purchase, or certain things you couldn't do unless you were at a certain level. Um, but right. this was completely voluntary. This was completely like you sign up to this app and system, and you get to participate, you know, in this system. Which I don't think is actually a bad idea the way it was done. Because well, then again, like I don't know fully how it works if you weren't in the system, but. It's kind of like just it's kind of like um it's kind of like paying for a subscription and you get certain exclusives for something you know except you don't have to pay you just have to be part of the app and and try and you know be good with your financials so for example if you were spending a lot of money on alcohol they might lower your rank but if you're buying um environmentally friendly products or something maybe it'll go up i'm not 100 percent sure on what gives you points and what doesn't but it's just a an algorithm that kind of looks at your financial behavior. Um, where it becomes an issue is where recently there's been a bit of news about the government trying to implement this um, as a, like a mandatory thing that everyone partakes in. And so this is more than just looking at your financial behavior. This is also things like CCTV cameras who can see basically everything, um, can see what you do. And if they see you I don't know, littering or whatever, for example, then you go down in points. Um, but then, so, so basically, the, basically everything you do is being watched and rated and everything you do earns a value of positive or negative points. Um, 
And the way it works, I don't know how it must work. It must be an insane amount of you know com computation and algorithms that make this work. Um, but where it's like it, where it gets it gets to the point where it's not fair because there are certain things like because uh, if you don't if you have some opinions on a political party, for example, um, and the Chinese government doesn't want you to have those opinions, they're going to lower your rank and you're yeah. not going to be able to have these certain privileges. And so it becomes more, less of just a bonus for subscribing to this thing and more of we're going to control you as a population and control what you can and can't do and can and can't say. And that's where it becomes an issue and something that the world should not be tolerating. I mean, that's that. Yeah, that's that's where the problem where the major problem lies in it is that it's because it's. As far as I'm aware, China are the only country sort of implementing this type of system. And where where it becomes a concern is the fact that China is a um so China is a uh communist party and they have um you know, and so that they obviously the Communist Party of China have an investment in you know, keeping keeping in power and to s squash any sort of um, opposition. So, mm -hmm. and it's been, I remember I watched a video on it and it was basically saying that uh, there was this one guy who's sort of known as a um, outspoken journalist on, on the uh, Communist Party of China who, um, his credit score was, like, kept, basically kept being lowered, and so, really, I think it's a system that, you know, is deeply flawed, especially when you have a government of the nature of China, that's where, mm. that's where the major problem lies, and why I think it's, it's a, it's a system that really shouldn't, be in place at all yeah <laughs> i think that's i think that's yeah that's about it <laughs> yeah cool. yeah yeah i mean i guess i guess we're fairly like mutual on not wanting it to be a government controlled thing eh so though you were saying so if it was so here's the question if it was more of a system like the one in black mirror would you therefore be for it no i think actually no because the the, the black mirror one still is government controlled it's just that the government's not the one rating you um everyone else is rating you but then like yeah i think no that would be worse to be honest i think if everyone got to rate you that'd be even worse because that's just gonna that's just the, the social the, the Black Mary episode is just an exaggeration of like social media and how yeah. people rate each other and like posts and stuff like that and Uber ratings and that sort of thing. It's an exaggeration of that. And that would actually be way, way worse. Um, I think. I think the only way I would be okay with it, whereas if it's like, it's purely like a financial um, analysis and they're not actually looking at your actual behavior. They're only looking at stuff which can be logged. Like, uh, for example, if, if you commit a crime, for example, um, that's obviously logged in some sort of system, so you lose points for that. Um, but they wouldn't have cameras watching you and doing all these algorithms to see if you if you looked at some guy funny or whatever, and that lowers your points. Or something. I don't know. I don't know what they plan on doing. But if and and it has to be a voluntary system. If it's enforced, right. and everyone has to abide by it. Then it's just nonsense like uh, forcing someone to live that lifestyle is not you know it should be something that it's it can only be a bonus it shouldn't be something that can be worse for you yeah it should be something like if you keep up these good habits then you get bonuses as opposed to if you have bad habits then we stop you from we stop you from having these things that you would normally have access to that's not something i i, I agree with yeah right no i think yeah i mean yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely in agreement of that, um, or of that sort of thing.
of it being something that really shouldn't I mean also it would it would definitely depend on what considered good would be would be the most interesting aspect right. to it yeah um and so that's where sort of the problems would lie um but yeah i i just i just don't see a real benefit for having a system like that um mm. yeah and like what i mean the interesting questions would be what would its impact on society be yeah would, would be the major question and i don't i don't know the answer to that um yeah i think that's a major question to consider but there really isn't there really isn't a a reason to put a to put a system in place um yeah i mean to anyone listening to the podcast whether it be live or on youtube feel free to leave in the comment section your thoughts on the system um or anything else that we've talked about um today as well um and then we can potentially use those comments especially the youtube comments or on any of our other social um networks um to and then we can grab those comments and then use them in in uh later episodes of the podcast just wanted to mention that yeah i think um in future podcasts we might talk more about other advancements in technology and how that could affect the world um technology wise and social wise as well i think that's we've got some interesting stuff to talk about there yeah i mean it's definitely each sort of individual thing i think you can very easily break break down that larger topic yeah. as a whole um into yeah, like many absolutely. into sort of many topics um but i think i think we've yeah i think we've reached the the end of that sort of main topic which sort of leads into our last segment um which um which I think it's Ben's turn to sort of introduce that topic. Um, yeah. Uh, our next segment is called... What you doing? Um, and so this is where we talk about what we've been doing um, in the past however long, slash watching, slash reading, and what we would like to do, slash watch, slash read in the future. Um, so actually something I've been doing in the last week not even just watching, but um, if you probably haven't heard, but um, with Apple's latest iOS update, they they, re they have released this app um, called Shortcuts, which allows you to create um, functions and shortcuts on your phone to do basically um, e basically anything. You can control things like um your flashlight you can play music you can launch websites get web content from other websites it's basically not i wouldn't say unlimited but there's a lot of potential to basically create your own workflows and shortcuts of things that you can do on your phone um and i've been fascinated by this because i i i love programming that sort of thing i just haven't done i haven't done a lot of it but this is really simple structure that is really easy to learn and work um it's all using like drag and drop blocks to try and kind of create these scripts. Um, and some examples, like the first one that I made was an instant Rickroll button. So you tap the button, <laughs> um, and it immediately plays, never gonna give you up, and it makes the flashlight strobe. Um, and then I tried developing some more serious ones, so I made one called Shuffle Albums, which will look at a playlist um, and get albums within that playlist and then shuffle them so that you listen to an entire album followed by another album followed by another album but in a random order so because i get this all the time where i want to listen to albums in their entirety but i don't know what to listen to so i wanted to shuffle them so i made that um there's one where you can hit a button and it will instantly take you to um and play the music video of that song um i've got a version that plays it in apple music or there's a version that plays it on youtube um if, obviously if a music video for that song exists if it doesn't you'll just get some random video or it won't work 
Um, I yeah, there's other ones. There's people who have made ones such as like morning routines and stuff, where it reads you a bunch of information, starts a podcast or something like that. There's one called Ultra Low Power Mode, which like turns off all these settings to like when you're on that last five percent, you can get the most like juice out of it. There's like auto translate text. There's convert uh, uh, photos and and videos into gifs and that sort of thing. You can make PDFs. There's an instant upload to Imgur. This is a really really helpful one where you just you tap a photo and you then launch the shortcut and it will upload it to Imgur and give you a link to copy. So you can then send that link to everyone or anyone. Um, what else have I made? I, I basically what I did is because I've been making these music related ones. I went on to Reddit. And I posted saying um, that I'm addicted to making these things and I want to make some more. Do you have any requests? And a bunch of people like gave me heaps of requests. And I still have a big backlog of requests to get to. <laughs> but there's 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 stuff like um, someone asked for an, if I could get them an MBA schedule, like and so I found this website where I could get content from it and show an upcoming M- MBA schedule. Even though you can just Google that and find it out yourself, it was still interesting to make. There's stuff like water progress. So if you log how much water you drink, I made one that will tell you if you've had enough water that day or the previous day. Um, there's There was a really interesting one uh, called Pitchfork's Best New Tracks that I made, which um, is, it gets info from uh, this website, which I think posts like a monthly, like what their favorite new music is. And I get that info and I find that music and add it to a new playlist. Um, there's one called What Time Is It In? And you type in any country or place and it will get the time. That one's, actually that one doesn't work very well, I'll, I'll admit. Um, <laughs> there's one where you get, get lyrics to a Spotify song that you're playing. Um, and then the one that I made last night, which I thought was really, really impressive, was somebody requested um, somebody requested a shortcut that will give them a random episode of The Simpsons. Um, somebody previously made, actually only like yesterday, actually posted one where it will play in Netflix a random episode of The Office, um, which of course only works if you have, you have Netflix in the US or a country that has The Office on that pl- on in, on Netflix. Um, but right. all that does is it has a full list. It just has a list of the link to every episode. And it chooses a random one and plays it, which is a very kind of simple way of doing it. Um, my one doesn't actually take give you a link to the Simpsons episode because um, I don't even know where to watch those episodes. They're not on, you know, it's on everything. Everyone's got a different platform to watch on depending on what country you're in. So all it does is give you the, a random episode and the title of that episode. And what it does is it gets a random number from 1 to 29, which is how many seasons there are currently. And then it looks for that it goes to that Wikipedia page, that article, and it gets the content from that page and it searches for the episode numbers and then it will give you a random episode number and the title of that episode. And it took a lot of work to make that to make that work. Um, and then I posted it and had about two upvotes and I was really disappointed that no one thought it was cool. Um, it was, it's quite a complex, it's quite a complex thing. But anyway, I just kind of have loved just making these things and seeing what I can do with it. Um, huh. yeah, it's just been really, really fun to do. And I don't know, because we've got a week off currently, that's what this, well, this past week has been a week off from school. So I've basically been spending all day doing that, um, <laughs> trying to keep up with these requests and everything I've been getting as well. Yeah, um, but it, on the other side of things, in terms of TV, I did finish Arrested Development Season 5, um, or Season 4 and 5, I can't remember what point I was up to last week. Um, season 5, I would definitely say, is slightly more enjoyable, I think, than Season 4, and I th- can't remember if I mentioned it last week or not, but the, the, the remix of Season 4 is only slightly better than the original Season 4. It definitely got better later on where the characters kind of interweave more and connected more, but it was really only marginally better. There was still a lot of things I didn't like about it in terms of the narration stuff repeating itself. But season five was enjoyable, but still I don't think it's it's nearly as good as the original seasons. The original three seasons are just like comedy gold. Like everything's just, every minute you're laughing basically. Um, whereas 
they focused a lot more on the actual story and there were less kind of funny things, less things to laugh at, I guess. Um, and then in other news, literally just this week, just this week, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, because I only noticed it yesterday, Brooklyn Nine-Nine season five is now available on Netflix. So I started watching that. And um, have, have you watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Matt? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched, I've watched all of it. Um, or, all of it. Um, okay. Yeah, I've watched all of it. Because, yeah, because they did the exact same thing. Because I've only watched the first two episodes of season five. And they did the exact same thing that they did in season four, where, where at the end of the previous season, they had this big cliffhanger. Of, and, and season at the end of season three, it was um, Jake and... Jeez, I've forgotten his name. The uh, Captain... Captain Holt. Is it Holt? Holt. It is Holt. It's Holt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, put into a witness, witness protection program or whatever. But then in the next two episodes of season four, they're out of it and it's back into the regular Joe stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then they focus and then they just do another kind of regular season where they're in at the, at the 9-9, at the precinct. And they've done the same thing in season five. Um, where are the first two episodes and, and Jake's out of prison, you know, and it's just like, oh, why, like, what, like, why did the, why couldn't I have half a season of Jake being in prison? Like, it, I reckon there's just a lot of potential that could have gone down there and I, I feel cheated. I feel cheated that they <laughs> led up to that and had that huge cliffhanger of him being, uh, you know, found guilty and then, and then it just frustrates me that they do that and they couldn't have, explore more of that. I want to see more of it in a different format as opposed to the same precinct format that they've been doing, I guess. That's, I mean, I haven't seen the rest of the season, but I assume it's going to be something along those lines. Um, and then, literally, just before we recorded the podcast, I got an email saying, Good Place Season 3 is now on Netflix. So as soon as this finished, I'm going to get some lunch, and I'm going to start Good Place Season 3. <laughs> either that or the rest of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Now, because both these seasons just came out at the same time, now I don't know what to watch. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention with the rest of development, I didn't actually realize until I finished it. But only half the seasons on Netflix. Like they split season five and half, um, oh, which feels really weird because it, it ends. It, it I think the rest of the seasons meant to come out later this year, but it ends quite suddenly, and it's like it doesn't feel like a proper ending to a season. I don't really know why they did it. They did the exact same thing with Disenchantment, where it got a 20-episode run, and they only, I think, have 10 episodes on Netflix, where it ends on this... Well, Disenchantment ends on a bit of a cliffhanger and some some loose ends that aren't quite tied up. And, um, yeah, but the, the rest of the season should be coming out either later this year or, or next year. Um, it's, just, it's just weird. I don't know why they do it. <laughs> Um, because it's weird because Netflix is known for dropping an entire season at once, but now they yeah. split it in half. But the season, the season one wasn't written to be in half. You know how like network shows have a Christmas break, right? Yeah. And they, they so they even do half seasons, right? At the end of the first half of the season, before the Christmas break, they always have some sort of something that's quite climactic, um, that leads up to something or cliffhanger or something. But the end of season five, Arrested Development, was so sudden, and I was just like, like what? Like, a lot of things came together in the last episode, but they mm. didn't... Like, I, I was fully expecting another episode because I was, like, confused. Like, why, why is it suddenly over? There's no resolution to any of this. It was just like, we're done. No more episodes. It's just, like, really confused. Yeah, kind of similar to how I felt at the end of this channel, I think. Um, and I actually right. think it's odd that Netflix does this because they easily could have had all the episodes ready to go and want that once. Mm. I think it would have made for a much better viewing experience i guess the good thing is for me because i've only just caught up and watched the show that it's less of a wait time for me uh, <laughs> yeah i think it's odd yeah um no that is very odd um all right yeah well that's i think that's it for me yeah um yeah so for me um i've been a bit i've been a bit slack to be honest in terms of watching stuff mm. Um, so I'll talk about what I've been, um, I'll talk, yeah, um, I'll talk about, so I've, I've mainly been watching, I've been watching a lot of, uh, YouTube content, um, mainly, um, from, you guessed it, um, Achievement Hunter, um, 
Oh, and actually rewatching right. some content from Rooster Teeth as well. And I want to talk about this content because it's really, really cool. Um, so uh, Rooster Teeth uh, produce... I'm not sure if they still do it, but they've done like a fair amount of it. I think they've done about four seasons of it. Um, they produce a series called Immersion. And so what the premise of the series is, is they get, um, they get two guys, um, or like just two people, and they put them into situation, into like video game situations, and they try and like test like how realistic that situation is. Um, right. And so what happens... Do you have like what kind of examples? Yeah, um... Yeah, yeah, um, so, the episode that I, the episode that I watched was a, um, an episode where they were playing, um, Hitman, the, the video game Hitman, um, but they were doing it, like, in real life, basically, so, everyone had, like, masks, they had guards, and their goal was they had to, like, kill, um, to kill this, like, senator guy. And they, obviously, they had, like, fake stuff, right? So they had, like, stickers, which were, like, poison stickers. And then they had, um, like, a fake knife as well. Um, and so these, these guys are, like, playing, are, like, playing Hitman, but in real life. And, like, trying to work out how realistic it would be. Like, could someone actually pull it off? And it's really funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really funny, and just really well done as well. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just really, it's just overall really, really well done. Um, so that was one of the things I watched. I want to talk about something I read, um, this story that I read about, which really annoys me, and I want to get your opinion about it, Ben. Um, all right. So what happened, right, is in Russia, there was this woman who was chucking, like, a mixture of water and bleach on guys, um, like, jeans, um, most of the time in their crotch area when they were, um, where they were quote-unquote man-spreading, um, for those who don't know, man-spreading is a thing where... Uh, men basically spread their legs as wide as possible. Um, and it's something that uh, feminists um, are complaining about. Um, now, firstly, manspreading, right? Bit of a dick move to do. Because, um, you know, you're on a train and stuff, right? Like, there's, like, not many seats. So it's like, yo, don't hog the seats, man. Right? <laughs> Which is fair enough. But, don't go around throwing bleach on people's jeans. <laughs> That's not cool. Don't do that. <laughs> also, it's really, like, it's dangerous because it's bleach on someone's crotch. <laughs> That's not good. Don't do that. And I read the article and I got really mad. Legitimately, I got really <laughs> mad. I was like, why is this happening? And this woman was like, really, oh, I, I need to, I need to find the article. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, that sounds like something from the Onion, you know, like, it sounds like a fake headline. Yeah, <laughs> um, you sure it's real, right? I th- it's not from the I, Onion, is it? I, I assume <laughs> so. Um, that that is a pretty strange thing to do that's for sure and it's yeah horribly not cool yeah (laughs) so she she was quoted as saying um we not only cooled the man spreading down but also marked them with identification spots um oh my god (laughs) wow um yeah that's horrific she said something and it was so Oh, wow, and it's, like, some young chick. It's not, like, an old woman. Yeah. I was expecting, like, a 50-year-old woman or something, like, going around, like, spouting her feminism or whatever. (laughs) I was like, 
the image on I I just found an article on the Blaze. Is that where you you were reading this? Um, I I saw it originally on um Unilad. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's what's it's, the image that... on YouTube or something? But like, there's a screenshot from the video, and the guy's just sitting in a seat like this. This single, it's not like a bench where he could. He's taking up more space than usual. He's sitting next to another guy, on like a single seat. He's not taking up any more room than anyone else's. So if that's really the reason that she's doing this, then there's not a very valid reason. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just because I don't know. Because he's does he have a problem with him trying to show off his junk or something? Is that the issue? Um, this is very odd. Yeah, I don't know what to say um, about this. Yeah, it's just uh it just annoyed me so much reading this article. I'm like, why? Like, are you serious? Like, ah, oh, it's just like this is why people hate feminists. Right. Like, because of stories like this. Um, yeah. And it's just something that's not, like, like, that's not the right way about go- about going about it. No. Ah, oh, like, ah, oh, it's just, I'm just so mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought, I thought I would, I would, um... I thought if, chances I are if it's it. a YouTube video it's it must be partially fake, right? Potentially. Oh, the video has been pulled off YouTube for violating YouTube's community guidelines. No surprises there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a weird tangent. I just <laughs> wanted to mention it cuz it annoyed me and I just wanted to <laughs> rant about it for like yeah. 5 minutes. Um yeah, so that's something I read. That's that's one of the th- <laughs> for that in immersion. Oh, um, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. And then for my um, then for my um stuff I would like to watch, um, because I I was lazy and I didn't watch any of the stuff that I that I listed um on last week's podcast. Um, so it's probably this. It's probably to be honest the same. The same, um, the same, the same shows and, and, um, and films. Um, yeah. That's me done. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, in that case, it's time to move on to the last segment in our show, which is the crunchy comments. So this is the section where if you have anything to comment, you should comment and then we'll read it. Simple as that. Where can, where can people find us and comment? Um, there's, there's YouTube. Obviously, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, we have a Patreon. There's um, uh, I think you can come in there. Um, there's Ambit. Um, lots of places. The the live Twitch feed. If you're watching live on Twitch, you can comment there, and we'll answer your question on that show live. How good is that? Otherwise, we'll have to wait till the next episode, and then you got to wait a whole week to get your comment read, and that's just no fun. Um, but yeah, so no comments for today, but, uh, just letting you know, you should, you should do that. You can also find us, um, now on any podcast, or not necessarily any podcast app, I'm not 100% sure how they all work, but the Apple Podcast app, Overcast, uh, CastBox, uh, those sorts of apps, if that's how you listen to podcasts, you can find us on there, just search for Red Life Riot, no spaces, and you should find it. And... If by chance you have any interest at all in giving us any money, uh, there's a Patreon, <laughs> as I mentioned, where we actually have a few perks. Um, so if you wanted to join the $1 tier, um, you'll get this podcast a couple days early, hopefully. Um, and if we develop any further content like we hope on doing, then you'll be able to get that stuff early. And if we're able to directly upload it to Patreon, you won't have to watch any YouTube ads or anything like that. Um, if you want to give us $2 a month, we'll subscribe to your YouTube channel. We'll follow you on Twitter and it, and Instagram. Um, plus, you get, the pre- you get the previous tiers, obviously, for all of that. Um, pay $5 a month. You can add suggestions and vote on what topics you think we should talk about. 
that's something I think is definitely worth because we don't always know what to talk about and we need suggestions so much help um, would be appreciated um, $10 a month and you'll get a monthly shout out from us so currently no one's on that tier so we don't have to shout anyone but we'll give you a shout out um, and if you hug us $25 you get to feature on our podcast um, that's that's a, a one-off thing if you purchase that and you pay for more than one month you still you only get the one come on a podcast once maybe if you do it for a whole year we'll get you on another time i don't know but um those are our tiers on patreon so completely yeah. optional we're not we're not in dire need of money at the moment because we're still in school studying at the moment so we're not going quite full force into the production company yet, but any kind of startup money that we could get would be hugely beneficial to us and the content yes. that we plan on creating and building building the network yeah. that we plan on. Building. Yeah, for sure. Just yeah. just developing on on that point. Um uh yeah, we definitely we definitely would um for sure appreciate money, um, because that money would be put back into the company. Um, and would would therefore be invested in better equipment, so um, so likely better mics um, for the podcast, um, which therefore would make the quality better, um, which I think everyone would 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 enjoy, um, and just other equipment, which will therefore mean better content for you guys. So um, so you guys Absolutely. would would benefit. Um, from that yeah of course and the goal we currently have set up is that if we get 500 patrons tash will come onto the podcast and i think talk for an hour about vegetables or something like that it, <laughs> tash if you don't know because he cuts out his intro at the start um <laughs> is the guy running everything behind behind the podcast in terms of the technical aspects he runs a live stream um, and he edits the podcast to go up later, which by the way, I've got to hand it to him. He did a great job last week cutting out that nonsense that we talked about during the live stream. Um, <laughs> and so if we get 500 patrons, he'll come on, he'll put his voice on the podcast, something he's absolutely, uh, hates the idea of. So there you go. Yeah. That's some encouragement. Please, um, please if... <laughs> help us make that happen. Please. Yeah. I want to see that happen. It'd be amazing. Of course, you shouldn't feel obligated or anything. If you just enjoy this content, you just want to listen to it, and you don't have any money to give, all good. Just keep listening and watching on YouTube, and you're supporting us that way just by showing that you care. And comment. Please comment so that we know that we have people listening because it's encouraging to hear comments, and we'll answer all your questions and all that kind of stuff. Cool, cool. Yeah, so I think with that, that's the end of uh, the third episode of uh the red laugh right podcast my name's been matt and i've been ben and uh thanks for watching